Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Altiplano. This is a two to five player bag building resource management economic game where you take the role of a worker from the South American Highlands or Altiplano. You will be moving, gathering resources, storing resources, and fulfilling orders trying to become the most successful worker. How do you become the most successful worker and win the game? By having the most victory points at the end of the final round. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in Altiplano. Now let's take a look at the components. You have location tiles, the farm, which has the alpaca symbol. This is where you get the alpaca wool and cloth. The forest, which has the tree symbol. This is where you get the wood and cacao. The harbor, which has the anchor symbol, where you get fish and boat cards. The market, which has the bag symbol, where you get glass and order cards. The mine, which has the mountain symbol, where you get stone, ore, and silver. The road, which has the sign symbol, which allows you to draw or retrieve more tiles. And the village, which has the house symbol, where you get carts and houses. The extension strip, this is where you'll buy your extensions. Extensions, these are used as additional action spots. Roll tiles, there is a farmer, fisherman, miner, shepherd, stoneman, trader, and woodcutter. For each of the players, you have Action boards, warehouses, where you will store goods, scoring overviews, containers, these hold your used goods, player pawns that you will move locations, road markers, and cloth bags. Game cards, you have house cards, boat cards, order cards, and mission cards. Goods tiles, you have food, corn, wood, stone, ore, cloth, wool, silver, fish, glass, alpaca, and cacao. Coins, carts, first player marker, the score pad, and finally your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three player game which takes 10 steps. Step one, place location tiles. Place the location tiles randomly in a circle in the center of the play area. This will form your plateau. Step two, place general supply. Place all the food tiles and coins in the center of your plateau. Step three, place location supplies. For the farm, you will get a number of alpaca, wool, and cloth tiles based on the number of players in the chart in the rule book. For the forest, you will get a number of wood and cacao tiles based on the number of players in the chart in the rule book. The harbor will get a number of fish tiles based on the number of players, and the boat cards will be placed face up. For the market, you will get a number of glass tiles based on the number of players, as well as a number of order cards based on the number of players. You will shuffle the order cards and remove a number based on the chart in the rule book. So in this case, we will have 10 order cards. For the mine, you will get a number of stone, ore, and silver tiles based on the number of players. For the road, you will get a number of corn tiles based on the number of players. And then for the village, you will get a number of carts based on the number of players, and then place your house cards face up. Step four, remove, separate, and shuffle extensions. Remove any extensions that are not used based on the number of players. Then separate the extensions based on the back of the tile, A through D, and then shuffle each stack. Step five, place extension strip and draw extensions. Place the extension strip next to the plateau. Then to the right, stack the extensions with D on bottom to A on top, and then draw the top five to place next to the extension strip. Step six, get player components. Choose a color and get the corresponding player pawn, road cube, container, as well as an action board, warehouse, one cart, and a cloth bag. Step seven, place player components. Place your road marker on the top space of the road track that has a four. Place your action board in the center of your player area with the cart at the upper cart space on the action board. Then place your action board in the center of your player area with the cart at the upper cart space on the action board. And finally, place your warehouse next to your action board. Step eight, choose a first player. The youngest player is the first player and gets the first player marker. Step nine, get a roll. Shuffle and deal one roll tile to each player face up. Step 10, get starting resources. Get the corresponding resources in the bottom left of your roll tile. Now let's look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of rounds until the end game condition is triggered. If either a location is empty or the extensions aren't fully refilled, you will finish that round and have one more full round. A round consists of four phases. Drawing, planning, actions, and cleanup. 
Now let's look at each phase in detail. Phase one, drawing. Simultaneously, players will retrieve and draw tiles to their planning spaces up to their road number. You can retrieve any previously placed tiles from your action spaces, extensions, or roll tile. It is at this time that you can retrieve coins that are unspent from extensions as well. Once you've chosen a number to retrieve, you would draw tiles from your bag to fill the remaining planning spaces up to your road number. If and when your bag runs out of goods tiles, you would refill the bag from your container. Once all the players have retrieved and drawn their goods tiles, we move to phase two, planning. Players will simultaneously place tiles on their action spaces. You would place tiles on unoccupied action spaces with the type of tile needed for the action depicted. You do not have to place all of them, but keep in mind that you would draw fewer tiles next round. If an extension requires coins, you place that during the planning phase as well. Then in player order, you would declare the planning phase complete. Then we move to phase three, actions. In turn order, take one action. This continues until all players pass. When taking an action, you must meet the requirements and your pawn must be on that location. Keep in mind that you don't have to take all of the actions and can save them for a later round or retrieve them later. To move your pawn, by foot is one space or one step away and costs one food from the movement action space. Moving by cart is up to three spaces or steps away and you would move a cart over. To use additional carts, it costs food in the movement action space. Movement is done before or after your action. Now let's look at the basic actions for each location. For the farm or the alpaca symbol, this produces food, wool, and cloth. For the forest or the tree symbol, this produces wood or trades cacao. For the harbor or the anchor symbol, this produces food or you can trade fish or build a boat. For the market or bag symbol, you can sell goods, buy an extension, acquire an order or deliver goods. For the mine or the mountain symbol, this produces stone or silver. For the road or the sign symbol, this allows you to construct a road. For the village or the house symbol, this allows you to build a house, store goods or buy a cart. Once you've taken the action, you would place the goods used for the action or goods gained in the container. Keep in mind that only coins are spent and never go into the bag. Once all players pass, we move to phase four, cleanup. Cleanup takes three steps. Step one, pass the start player to the left. Step two, reset carts, moving them back to the left. Step three, refill extension strip. Slide extensions down if any were bought and refill from the top of the stack. When you are filling a warehouse, you would fill bottom to top and left to right in each row. Only one goods type is allowed per row, unless you have corn. Corn is stored in any row and stored immediately. You must store corn with other corn until that row is filled. Once we finished cleanup, we would begin the next round and rounds would continue until one of the in-game conditions are met. Either a location is empty or the extensions cannot be refilled. Then we would complete that round and one more full round and then go to the final scoring. The final scoring takes five steps. Step one, score goods. You would score one victory point for wood, stone, or cacao, two victory points for any wool or ore goods, three victory points for any cloth or silver goods, and four victory points for any glass goods. When scoring goods, you would include your goods in your warehouse. Step two, score boats. You would score two victory points for each boat card. Step three, score houses. You would score four victory points for each house card. Then score one bonus for each goods tile of that type. When scoring the bonus, you cannot include any goods on orders. Step four, score orders. You would score victory points listed for fulfilled orders. And step five, score warehouse. You would score points listed for each completed row in your warehouse. Once all the players total their score, the player with the most points is the most successful worker and wins Altiplano.